All right, everyone. Uh, welcome back to our Data Economy Day. This is our final session of the day today. Uh, I'm Aaron Stanley, Editorial Director at Filecoin Foundation. Uh, appreciate everyone being here, everyone who's been around here all week. Uh, today we have a conversation with Ram from Open Ledger. Uh, we're going to be talking about the role of decentralized or role of data in decentralized AI. Obviously, a very important topic, very relevant. Um, so yeah, I uh, would love to call up Ram to the stage, and um, I guess whichever side you prefer. <laughs> um, okay, all right, all right. So, so Ram, uh, really excited to have you here today. Appreciate you being here. Um, would love for you to get us started just by telling us uh, a bit more about yourself, some of your background, and then uh, let's talk a bit more about Open Ledger and 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 what you're building here. Hey guys, this is Ram from Open Ledger. So good to meet you all. Um, so I've been in this industry from 2017. So started. Uh, so it's quite interesting because uh, myself and my co-founder we used to do technology consulting, and someone paid us in Bitcoin. So and uh, we got interested behind the technology and thought, okay, there's a huge void around this. We should start building something around that. So we built sort of like an R&D firm. Uh, this was way back in 2017. Uh, grew to a, a large. Um, ecosystem of developers across the globe. Um, we've worked with various uh, foundations and uh, firms across Web3, like Hedera. We've worked with Polygon and so and so. We've also worked with uh, enterprises like uh, Walmart, uh, Viacom18, and many more. So uh, that's that's how I got into crypto. And then from there, you know, uh, we also always felt that data was never on chain. Uh, there was uh, not many solutions out there which actually provided a uh, scalable way of bringing data on chain. Uh, blockchains are called databases, but uh, they're typically not, right? So they're like ledgers where you can have assets stored and uh, shown information. So we wanted to change that. We want to bring in data on chain. So that is what evolved on to become Open Ledger. And uh, here we are now. Yeah, that's the background. Amazing. So um, I'd like for you to tell us a bit more about what exactly you guys are building here, but maybe before we even get into that, I know you guys just announced uh, earlier this month or last week uh, your series or your seed funding round. Actually, you have uh, a pretty impressive roster of uh, firms and also individuals who are on your cap table. Uh, so I'm hoping you could maybe tell us a bit about like you know what what you guys are building, and then also uh, with the experience with with the fundraising round and what 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 kind of your your takeaways are from that, and what what is what's the what does that mean for all of us? Yeah. So uh, OpenEdge is a sovereign data blockchain built for AI. Uh, so we, we raised about a few months back, but actually announced now. Um, so our announcement started uh, about a week back, and we were exploring what's the best way to do that. And uh, we made sure all our angels start tweeting about this. I guess that's how we got a bit viral and everyone knew about that. And one thing that really helped is that Sentient also announced along with us. So, uh, you know, everyone is talking with the AI narrative, so that helped. But yeah, so uh, about the investors, I think uh, what really helped is that when we were raising, um, uh, you know, we were one of the few AVSs that was building on top of Eigenlayer. And uh, we, and we were, uh, building something which is very integral part of um, Eigen. So if you take a look at Eigen's thesis, they call Eigen to be the cloud of crypto, uh, where they want um, every part of cloud to be brought to crypto, right? And we were covering the, I would say, the database management service uh, part of um, Eigen. And, uh, but we didn't want to just be sort of like a database. We want to expand and uh, become more as a data infrastructure. So we started with that. Uh, we explored and spoke to a couple of investors who we believe are aligned with our vision and also aligned with uh, Eigen's vision as well. So that's how one led to another, and we have a uh, great. And we're very grateful for the investors who believed in us and invested in us, and also angels. So since we've been in the industry for quite a long time, we've known various founders during this time, and like we've, we've been in conversations with them. They've always believed in us and said, if you guys build something, you know, I will, you know, I will put in a check. So that's how we uh, got all these angels on board. Yeah. So and I know you you sort of had a slight rebrand from OpenDB to Open Ledger as the course of that process. And so I'm 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 hearing you say that basically the idea is you know we don't just want to be focused on you know just Eigen, but we want to be focused on you know that's obviously a core value proposition. But we want to be uh, a bit broader and more broadly applicable to other folks in the ecosystem. Is that the idea? Yeah, more than Eigen, I think it's about. Uh, 
providing an end to end infrastructure uh, not just a database uh, i'll just probably explain about like what we are building right so if you take a look at decentralized ai um, or generally as ai itself there are three major pillars and uh, it starts with compute which is where everyone started like ionet gens and all these guys so nvidia solved the compute layer of ai and then there is equivalence of in web3 that you know and then on the other side there is inference and algorithm which is in web2 space it's open ai and in web3 there are people like sentient and ritual who are trying to solve that as well so there is no one working on data much there are very few people i think nuclear is one of the team that is actually working something similar to what we do so uh, we wanted to explore the space and we want to make sure that how our solution can be kind of be broadly spread across and cover the entire data life cycle for ai so that's how we evolved from just being a, a database to a, a much more larger data infrastructure got it got it and then uh, you you mentioned that one of your core theses is that really data is right now the biggest bottleneck in AI development. And I'm wondering if you can explain, maybe like tease that out a bit more. Like, what do you mean by that? How is how is data kind of throttling or bottlenecking uh, development of this uh, this space right now? Yeah. So um, as I explained, right, the three pillars and the major one is data. And if you take a look at uh, you know the process of creating a model, it starts with collecting the raw data. which players like grass do they right? they collect raw data and then uh, once the raw data raw data is collected it goes through labeling so there are a few other players in decent list space like sapien who go ahead and label that data and then there is pre training that goes on to the data that is labeled which is solved by jensen and other folks and then you have a model which now is available for people to start using but now you need to have you know the evaluation done people should do uh, ask ask questions for it uh, it should inference that and provide feedback and stuff like that which is usually passed on by human feedback right uh, so along all of this process data is the biggest uh, you know crucial role that it plays there like data is oil for ai and uh, a model is as good as the data it gets right and even needs an infrastructure which is permissionless and open so that the data is verifiable across all these play, uh, you know players all this life cycle we figured out that uh, there is not one single infrastructure that provides solution for all of these uh, players to integrate and work together like with us what ha- what happens is that we provide a decentralized infra which will let grass store their data and then someone like sapien permissionlessly access the data and then label that and then store back and then so that someone like jensen anyone who's going to use jensen could use labeled data by sapien and then start training with that so that is that's how we kind of solve you know uh, the three pillars of ai where data is the biggest crux and uh, and we are building much more stuff like we're working on synthetic data and few other stuff as well which will be announced soon uh, which will lo- which will also solve the various other uh, you know pain points in uh, data with ai and stuff Because my question would be like we hear so much talk about like the data economy and you know data is the driving force of 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 data is the new oil and all these things and and to hear that you know there's a lot more roadblocks here and a lot more you know, blockers than maybe people imagine who aren't really you know people who aren't necessarily in this world day to day really understand or imagine like I mean, why why is this like a problem that hasn't really been solved yet? I guess is maybe my question. Like, why why is this still, if, if that makes sense? Like, like this this issue of um, you know kind of garbage in, garbage out into into these models. Um, like, how is this like? Why is this a problem that maybe hasn't gotten the the, the attention it deserves? Or, or I mean, does that make sense? What yeah. I'm asking. You? So um, I think it would probably make sense, or uh, you know, would become sort of an issue probably like three years down the line or four years down the line. because that's that's when ai might be having a much more significant play in our lives uh, until then it's an experiment right i'm just going to uh, probably play around with open ai chat gpt and take a picture of the grand palace and ask like some information about it so once it becomes an integral part that's when we start to worry about how is it going to impact my life uh, so i saw this tweet about harsh tajer like um, which is he's part of y combinator he goes out and says that uh, one who labels the data controls the narrative and then he tweets again saying that one who controls the narrative controls the world so think about that right like people who actually provide the data later on would actually control what we interact what we get to know about the world so i think that's quite big and that uh, we've not realized how important that is uh, i guess once we get there once we you know uh, go to a point where ai is significant in our lives 
this will be spoken about by everyone now like how we talk about social media right now how it's invading our privacy i think very similarly we would have that in the next 2 to 3 years i remember hearing uh the founder of sapien actually whom you the company you've been mentioning at a panel i think it was at, at consensus uh an ai event at consensus and he was he was basically explaining how a lot of the ai the current ai data labeling it's basically a lot of this is just being done by hand by like people in like, like the Philippines or, you know, it's, it's a very like kind of manual, maybe like imprecise process that I did, like, I had no idea that was a thing. I had no idea, but it makes sense. That, okay. Somebody has to go in and be labeling this stuff. And like your data is only good as the way it's labeled and being indexed and whatnot. Um, uh, I guess anything else you want to add just to around some of the, the challenges that, that maybe like folks in the room who maybe not, may not realize just the extent of like how, how like big of a issue this is. Yeah, so I think uh, to continue to what you said, um, you know, we've had conversation with Trevor, and um, as he told, right, there are currently OpenAI spent about, I think for the last ChatGPT 3.0, they spent about $100 million labeling the data. And for ChatGPT 4, he mentioned that it's, it was 10x of that, right? So uh, imagine what's going to be happening in the next couple of years. Uh, people have, as I was talking about synthetic data, right, people have run out of data, and uh, there's not much enough data that is out there that we have to create synthetic data right now to train that AI. So uh, it really depends upon uh, who is labeling your data as well, uh, where, like, for example, uh, a company would say that this is being labeled by experts, but do you know that? Like, what is the way to verify that? Uh, I, you would need to believe someone like OpenAI for that. Uh, there is no verifiability in that, and that's one of the ways that we're solving that is because we provide prominence. So if someone labels the data, uh, you have his ID, uh, which is obviously his wallet address, and then that's tagged along to the entire data lifecycle until the pre-training. So you would be able to know who actually labeled the data initially when it started. So those, as I, as I told you, right, as it becomes significant part of our lives, we would have these issues come up. And um, like, for example, if someone decides to pollute the internet with certain information right now, and, uh, and people start to scrape the data and train the next model of open AI, you would be feeded with that data that was polluted. And you, there is no way that you could actually verify and figure out what went wrong and what was the data strained on until you have like a verifiable data infrastructure for that. So these could be the potential, you know, replications that happen because of this. Yeah. So I'm, I'm assuming we've all probably used ChatGPT at some point, asked it a question, and it spits out some inaccurate or wrong information, you know, and it's an answer to our question. And to kind of to your point, like we have really no way of going and backtracking and be like, oh, how did we arrive at this point where it's spitting out like just completely wrong information, right? <laughs> like there's just, it's just a kind of a black box, right? Absolutely. I agree to that. And I have experienced that myself. And um, so going, so kind of just piggybacking on this, like another one of your core theses uh, you guys talk about is that data should be determined by factors uh, such as, or data integrity, quality, data to quality integrity should be determined by factors like verifiability, diversity, being permissionless in nature, um, security, integrity. Um, maybe talk a bit about, you know, how your building will enable uh, all these factors to be, um, you know, part of the, 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 the data quality. Yeah. So, uh, to get back to what I said, like if you take a look at the entire data lifecycle, right from data collection to curation of the data where you pre-process the data and then you label that data and then you use that to train a model. Uh, during this entire lifecycle, uh, we provide an infrastructure where the data is stored across all the three phases. We also have a contract layer where anyone who's gonna label that data uses their wallet address to label it. And so through all of this, if you go ahead and see the lineage, you'll be able to verify using our infrastructure what kind of data it was trained on, who labeled it, and who can then kind of use that to you know, train it. Uh, with that, it provides verifiability. You would be able to know that it is decentralized, it, is not, it didn't come from one single body, it was not trained by a Filipino you know, processing agent sitting in, you know, across the globe. Uh, you know that it's actually trained by experts across the globe, right? So it's decent, it's available, you, you have that prominence. So that's what we're building on. So we are building that infrastructure so that you would know the data that was collected was collected across the globe. If it was an expert, you know that what kind of expert he is. We also provide benchmarking tests as well. So as anyone who's labeling the, labeling the data, we would benchmark them and prove that they are the actual person that's supposed to label that data. So we provide the infra that is required to verify all of this. Could they be compared maybe to, this may not be a precise analogy, but it just popped into my head as you were mentioning that. Could it maybe, maybe compared to like, you know, Wikipedia editors? Like there's some, 
there's some kind of uh, you know threshold that these folks have to pass to be able to go and make edits to Wikipedia and certain is, is that is it or maybe that's not the right way to think about it, but it, it just seems like you have to have kind of some sort of standard as far as like okay, like certifying the the, the credibility of who's actually you know making these making these judgments essentially. Yeah, even in that case, that's quite centralized, right? So uh, only the players of Wikipedia would know who actually edited that and who cannot and who can. So, but over here, we provide a decentralized solution where it's verifiable, you would, it's permissionless available, you can go ahead and access that, you would know who actually edited your data or labeled the data or whatever. Yeah. Got it, got it. And then how can a solution like this potentially interact with like the Filecoin network, like how, or Filecoin IPFS economy? How do you, how do you see the overlap here? So, um, you know, we would obviously generate tons and tons of data because we are also working on synthetic data and uh, we will be labeling the data as well. So there is a um, lot of data that is available and we would need a long-term storage to have the data stored and we're exploring working with Filecoin for that so where they can be like a long-term storage platform for us. Amazing. Um, so Ram, any final thoughts from you? And then what are the kind of the next steps that folks can take if they want to either learn more or engage with you guys or maybe just take the next steps to, to start using you? Yeah, so we've been in stealth, I would say, for the probably the last three to six months time. Uh, we just announced our race, so we've started speaking more about what we do. Uh, so you could follow our Twitter, it's Open Ledger HQ, uh, where we've uh, gonna announce about the products that's gonna come out. We're also going to announce about uh, a whitelist uh, program that we're starting as well. So you could find more information about us over there. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thanks so much, Ram. Appreciate your time and Thank exciting you. work, what you're doing with Open Ledger. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Amazing. All right, everybody. So that concludes our Data Economy Day.